On this episode of Video Show Me How, I show you how to do an oil change on a Jeep Wrangler CRD. Alright, so we're going to need some oil obviously, and the best thing to go for here is the 1040 weight oil depending on where you're located of course and what your temperature ranges are. You're going to need to look for the API CI4 or above, so obviously J fits the bill nicely. We're going to need 6.6 .6 litres for the Jeep JK, so just need a little bit more. Unfortunately they only come in 6 litres, so we need two of. Now we're also going to need some engine oil flush, and this helps remove oil sludge from the engine bay. Look at Molly's a great brand, made in Germany. But it's all pretty well the same stuff. Essentially it cleans out your oil galleries like you can see here, gets rid of any sludge or blockages. And of course we are going to need a brand new oil filter. This is what they look like if you haven't seen them before. The number that you are after is a WC0110, WC0110. This is what they look like, you can see that they have a little nipple on the top and that's the locator that needs to sit into the bottom of the actual cartridge itself when we put it in there. You can also see in the box, if I can get this open, uh, you will have a new oil O-ring and that's what they look like here. This is effectively what seals the lid of the cartridge holder uh, and make sure that you don't get oil everywhere in your engine bay. All right, to complete this job, these are the tools that you're going to need. We are going to need an oil pan. Now obviously get one that's large enough to hold all the engine oil, so we're looking for something that's 6.6 .6 liters or above. We're going to need an eight millimeter hex Allen key, or whatever you call them in your neck of the woods. We are going to need a half inch driver, a half inch extension, and probably most importantly, we need a socket, and this one is a 27 millimeter. So if you don't have one of those, uh, I would grab one of those before you get started. You really don't want to be using a shift or anything like that. We're going to need a funnel and obviously uh, some gloves if you have some handy. It can get pretty messy, but it's best to keep your hands nice and clean. All right, step one. We need to pop the hood. So with your Jeep, obviously, this is pretty straightforward. We flick the clips, we pull the latch, and because it's a Jeep and it is awesome, you can simply lean it back and rest it on your windshield or snorkel as it may be in this case. Alrighty, so once the bonnet's up, this is where the oil cartridge actually goes and this is its housing. You can see there's the 27 millimeter nut. It even tells you the torque specs on the top. You can see there 25 newton meters, no surprises. That's what we'll be talking to later. Step two we need to add our oil flush so grab that rip the rip the top off that and get ready take the oil cap off the top of the engine can't miss it it's bright yellow whack in your funnel and pretty straightforward add the oil engine flush next just throw the oil cap back on and tighten it down. Alrighty, step three is we need to start the engine and let it run for about 15 minutes. What this will do is run that oil flush through the engine oil and start really pulling the gunk out of the galleries and what have you, adding it to the oil so that when we drain the oil we get all the gunk out with it. All right, time's up, and once it is, switch off the engine. All right, oil pan, Allen key. We need to get underneath the Jeep, put your oil can in place, and crack the crack the nut for the for the sump. You can see it there, just behind the rear diff. Now this step is a little tricky. You want to continue to hold pressure pushing up on the nut 
just like I'm doing here. The reason for that is you do not want to drop it in the oil because you will go fishing for years with hot oil. It's not a good time. So keep pushing up, get it to the point where you can feel it's not winding out anymore and then quickly whip it out. The nut, that is. And kaboom, you can see the oil is draining out nice and easily. That's the other good thing about running some engine flush as well before you do this is the engine oil gets nice and warm so that it's much easier and much quicker to actually come out when you do pull the nut. Alright, once it is virtually stopped running, you could be here for hours, but depending on how much time you've got, next is just to have a quick look and make sure there's no metal shavings or anything on that bolt. But if you're good, time to thread that guy back in where it belongs. So grab a clean rag, just give it a bit of a wipe down. If you've made a mess, just like I have here, you don't necessarily want that oil cooking off later on and, and creating, uh, creating some smoke. Next thing, give it a bit of a tight by hand and then get your Allen key and uh, tighten it down. Now, this doesn't need to be crazy tight. You just want to snug it in there. Alrighty, so we're going along fine. Now we need our socket and our extension. We need to undo the housing top. So if you throw it on the top there, grab your wrench, crack the nut, and undo the lid of the housing. Step 10, now we need to remove the old filter. You can pull the air box out if you like. I've got a separate snorkel and it's a pain to pull out if I don't need to. So you can just push it across to the side and there's normally plenty of room. Grab a cloth so you don't put oil all through the top of your engine and just whip that sucker out as well, the filter in this case. You just need to pull the top housing off. It's got little uh, little clips in there. You can see that it, it snaps down on, so a bit of manpower and pull that, uh, pull that lid off. Alrighty, here's our old filter. Now this has done about 6,000 Ks. I normally like to change every five. But as you can see, it's not looking too bad. The oil, however, has probably seen better days. All right, time for our lovely new filter. Let's have a quick look at the difference here. So here's your O-ring. Now we need to essentially remove the old O-ring so we can install the new one. Now the easiest way to take your old O-ring off is just grab a flathead screwdriver and as you can see here it's just a matter of prying underneath it pulling up off she comes now generally speaking after 5000 k's they're normally still pretty good but it's best to just replace it with the brand new one you want to get it in the little groove here you can see so it's just a matter of getting one side started and then stretching it like a bit of a rubber band working your way around and it should go on without too much troubles what you want to do is make sure that there's a little film of oil on the o-ring itself so when you're tightening it it's not too much of a drama and obviously make sure that there's no twists in the o-ring either alrighty step 13 we need to add some nice new oil to the housing we just need to put a little bit in here and that's essentially just to keep some oil at the top end if you've had it sitting for a little while so that there's already some oil in the housing when you add your nice new filter. Step 14, we need to install our nice new filter into the housing lid. Obviously the nipple here goes on the bottom and you can see the little clips, it's just a matter of uh, popping them in there, pushing until it clicks. Then you wanna just make sure, give it a bit of a turn, make sure that it turns freely because when we're talking down on the lid there, you wanna make sure that it turns freely what can happen is you can break this nipple off if you don't do that. So pop it in there, locate the filter in the locate with the locating lug and start the thread by hand. You shouldn't feel any resistance here, it should spin freely. If it hasn't, check it, make sure the locating lug has located properly. Alright, so next step is to 
tighten to spec. Now use your normal wrench just to get it down until you start feeling it snug up. And once you've done that, grab your torque wrench. Remember for this particular Jeep, it's an 08 JK CRD. The torque spec is 25 newton meters. And finally, just give it a nice wipe down so you've got no residual oil. All right, we're almost done here. Step 17, we need to add our nice new oil to the engine. So take the oil lid off, get yourself a nice clean rag again, and basically just cover it around where you're gonna be pouring the oil. Just as a bit of a backup, if you become a bit of a klutz halfway through and start pouring oil somewhere you shouldn't, hopefully the cloth will cover most of it. Now, like we said at the start, the jugs that I have are only six liters. We need 6.6, .6, so obviously we need to do a full container in this case and a little bit out of the second one. Now top tip here, use your old containers that are empty to put your old oil in and then you can take that used oil to most auto stores and they will be able to dispose of it environmentally and properly and all of the above for you for free. So you can see on the side of most oil cans, there's the measurements on what is in there. We only need about 0 0.6, 0 0.7 extra. So be sure not to overfill. You always wanna go less rather than more. Step 18, we need to pull the dipstick, which is on the side here. Give it a clean off until it's nice and clean. As you can see, reinsert the dipstick and pull it back out. This will give you an indication of how you are traveling with your measurements. Now bear in mind, it will take a little bit of time for the oil to seep down to the sump. Some people like to start the car at this point. However, essentially, this is just our first check to make sure that there's oil in the engine before we start it. All right, so remove all your cloths, put the dipstick back in, make sure that's in, grab your oil lid, and re-tighten it onto the top of the engine. Step 19, we want to run the engine now, get that oil flowing through so we can get a proper measurement. So we need to run the engine for about five minutes. At this time, while the engine's running, rip around back to the bay, have a quick check over the things you've undone. So the oil lid on the top there, the dipstick and the filter housing itself and make sure that everything's tight and there's no leaks. Step 20, we're at the end. It really is now just a check. So pull that dipstick out again, clean it off, pop it back in there to get a reading and have a look how you've gone. You can see here, we're not quite full. I'd recommend not going completely to the top, just a little bit under will do the trick. Best to then check it in a couple of days and top up as needed. We hope you found this guide useful and if you did, hit the old like button to let us know. All the notes are in the description, so if you'd like a paper copy of what we've gone through, simply cut and paste. Feel free to leave any questions in the comment section, share with anyone you think might find this useful and of course subscribe for more videos just like this one.